with Bandits head coach Rich Gilgore, who has only two players in Bandits history who played more playoff games than you. That would be your fellow head coach and John Tavares and Mark Stainhouse. So, all that being said, as a first-year head coach, what's it like to be back on this floor as the playoffs continue in Banditland? I mean, unbelievable. I mean, the last two years, you know, we, we didn't make it. So, to be back and, you know, having one of the, well, actually the best team in the league, it's, it's a great feeling and it's been a long time coming, uh, being an assistant coach for seven, eight years and now to be head coach and to be where we're at right now is a, a, just an awesome feeling. So how is it different for you who've lived the moments as a player and as you mentioned, you know, eight years as an assistant and now it's co-head coaching duties with someone that you've been to battle with all these years here with the Bandits? It's great. I mean, I 100% uh, respect John Tavares, and like you said, uh, I think I played 18 years. We were together for all of that, and then uh, I took a year off, came back, and I wouldn't say I coached JT, but I was a coach while JT was playing, and that was another four or five years, and here we are four or five years into being uh, assistant coaches and now co-head coaches. So it's just uh, one of those things where, you know, we talked about it. It's funny. I'm 50 now, and I've been a bandit, you know, coach, player, whatever, for 26 years. So it's more than half my life. So this is one of the, you know, things in my life that has been huge. And and to share with John Tavares, you know, the GOAT. He is the GOAT. I don't care what anyone says. You can mention Paul, Gary, whoever. Mm -hmm. John Tavares is the GOAT. And to be... You know, together with him that long is awesome. So how has the relationship changed, bettered, progressed this year as co-head coaches? It, it's the same way we've always been. As a player, you know, I got to be captain for a while. He was assistant captain, and it's just one of those things where uh, we had the same goals. We have the same view on lacrosse. It's more about being a good teammate than being uh, worrying about your own stats. And I, I hope we got it across to the team this year that that's the big picture. You know, this is a team sport. Mm -hmm. If you want to uh, worry about individuals, go uh, play golf or tennis or, you know, something like that. And JT has the same view. So it's it's been a great run. And, you know, we still got a little uh, work left to, do, left to do. So when you look at the rundown of the team this year and the season long statistics and what you just said is that what stands out to both of you that the balance that has contributed to this success is clearly on display just in the numbers alone yeah it's it's all those uh, all the players buying in and you know it's a tough thing to do as a coach because you know and it's funny we always talk about how uh, young guys <laughs> I want to do this, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to like 25, 26, you're, you know, I, now I'm established and uh, this is my role. And then all of a sudden you get to 31, 32 and it's, oh my God, I, you know, you go back to being a rookie, I'll do anything to stay on the floor. Mm -hmm. So we just try and get that across to the guys. <laughs> and right now these guys are buying in mm -hmm. and that's the hardest thing to do. It's, you know, everyone wants to be kind of a, a, a star, but at the same time, you got to realize it's a team sport and there's team goals and those come first before any kind of individual, you know, thoughts. So you've seen it all with this team, but where have you seen the most progress this year at forward, transition, at defense? I won't even mention goaltending because everybody knows the heroic year Matt Vince has put in for you. But um, uh, what in those other areas? Where where have you progressed? Well, you stole my answer. <laughs> Matt, Matt Vince is uh, just you know lights out down there, and as a defense, that makes them be way more aggressive. And you know, so I, I know you said don't let's not talk about goaltending, but it's goaltending. And once you work from the crease out, it's a really easy thing to do. And at the same time, just you know, uh, Evie and uh, Dane both giving up the ball a little bit more and not worrying about finishing first and scoring, mm -hmm. but finishing first and wins. So those guys did a great job of that. And then our defense just being, you know, spot on 
most of the nights and Vino cleans up a lot, but they play great D and then all of a sudden they get the ball up the floor at 100 miles an hour and puts our O in a lot of good positions and every once in a while they throw in a goal. So mm -hmm. that's the big thing. I think it's, it just works. It's being a ultimate team and that's what's the difference this year, I, I, I think. Transition game though has clearly improved. Oh yeah. We, and we have so many young, good athletes on D now. And, you know, even in back in 16, we had a great year and uh, so many guys contributed in transition. And, you know, we got away from it a little bit and now we're back to it. And I'm telling you, you win that transition battle and the power play battle, you, you know, you're going to end up on the right end of the scoreboard more than not. As someone who's looking at things from the defensive side, which you are, and just as a casual observer, which I am, uh, I've been in really interested, you know, when, when tough moments happen, i.e. you give up a goal, it's amazing how often you'll find your defenders standing there with Matt for a minute and looking up at the big board and kind of checking out the replay right away as if to try to figure out whatever went wrong and figuring out a way to fix it for next time immediately. That's Vino. That's one of the things he did, uh, you know, on his previous team. Mm -hmm. And he said it's a good way for him to reset, catch his breath. Mm -hmm. Let's have a good talk about it, watch the replay, see what we did wrong, and let's correct it. So, and it's great because Vino talks to them. They come to the bench, they talk to me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like I said, we try and correct it. So. And that was all Vino. It's it's. <laughs> I would love to claim credit for it, but it, it's not me. It's Vino, and that's one of the things he brought to the team above stopping eighty three percent of the shots. <laughs> yeah, well said. All right, last one. It's the matchup, and it's happening again for a fourth time this year against the Toronto Rock here in the East Division Finals. Both teams learn a lot about the other throughout the course of the year. From a defensive standpoint, what do you feel you've been able to take from those matchups to prepare for this? Well, you know, it's like you said, it's we played them three times in the regular, regular season. They uh, got us once pretty good. We got them once pretty good, and then there was an overtime game. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty evenly matched. I think if we can make the shots come from outside and down the lane like we try and do every game, we'll have a nice advantage there. But they're a good offense, and, you know, that's going to be the uh, battle within the battle trying to make them take the shots we want them to take. They're going to try and get the shots they want to take, and it's, it's a battle every game. So they're a good team. We're a good team. They got good goaltending. We got good goaltending. <laughs> they got good transition. We got good transition. So it's going, to be a, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a good game, and that's what uh, I love about the playoffs. Right now the four best teams are still standing, and, you know, let's line up tomorrow and see what happens. And then who typically takes the lead in uh, the pregame address? Is it uh, you first and then JT or other way around? Or is there any superstition involved? Right now, JT's been given the uh, lead speech. So I just kind of sit in the background. And, you know, it's funny. We coach together in the summertime with Six Nations. And I'm head coach there. And I do a little more talking. But, again, we respect each other. I, I, I love him talking first. Mm -hmm because he'll cover a lot of stuff and then I'll just <laughs> I'll mop up what I think he he forgot and we go from there so it's a it's a good mix and I I, I just can't wait for tomorrow best of luck yeah thanks